good afternoon and welcome to Game Show 2017's League of Legends tournament. I am Young Sonox Yechang and joining me on the cast desk today is Ray 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 Raiko Kuzami. Kuzami. I almost got your name wrong right there. No, it's okay right there. People, sometimes people don't know how to pronounce my name so you know, that it goes once in a while. So we're here for the quarterfinals for Game Show Asia 2017 and we'll be looking at the game of Sovereign vs New Blood. The Sovereign, definitely a, a name that we've heard a lot before, they are in the TLC, while New Blood is not a name that we're that familiar with. So seeing as the, seeing these two teams to compare to each other, I feel that there is a kind of a favourite right here. What do, you, what do you think? I think definitely the favourite here has to go to Sovereign because they are a professional team that has played in TLC for a couple of seasons couple of splits already and also the players in the Sovereign team are quite stacked as well so you know that these players have been here in the professional scene for quite a while and when you look at the team itself they have players who have been champions as well so this team definitely is the favorite compared to New Blood. New Blood on the other hand is a team made up of challenger of players in the challenger tier list who have shown very good dominance in the solo queue the solo duo queue games but we have yet to see them perform as a team and this I'm not sure whether they have actually had a lot of training with it, so we can't really say New Blood is the favorite. So we look at Sovereign as the favorite because they have been training as a team for quite some time. But New Blood can expect to um, surprise us because they have the skills. So we need to watch and whether they are able to do that what we want them to do, which is to maybe upset Team Sovereign. So New Blood will be trying to use some of their challenger prowess to to just overcome whatever teamwork or macro play that Sovereign will be able to bring to them. So, uh, I want to, so recently we've seen some pretty new picks coming into the meta. We see some Jin, we see, we've even seen some Nunu. What do you think that any of these teams will bring up some of these more new picks that we've seen in the current meta? Yes, we've seen a lot of current meta shifting around. We've seen the top lane, um, picking up the Camille, the Javan, and in the jungle we see um, Rek'Sai coming back into the meta due to the sh changes in his kit. We also see Corky coming back into the mid lane. We see um, Galio still is the st st strong tank in the mid lane as well. And you can see that in the bottom lane, we see Caitlyn as well as Jin coming back. Caitlyn still dominant even though there's a nerve onto Runan just by building the static shift. So we see many, many changes that has happened to the uh, patch, but it still makes each lane a very contestable lane because there are certain picks that are very dominant. Alright, so, so uh, for Champion Select for our game between Sovereign and New Blood, we will be using an external pick and ban software because due to some uh, personal technical issues. So we will be jumping into the pick and ban. Pick and ban. So uh, we see Lee Sin. We're going to see Lee Sin, uh, Zach. They're going to be banned out. They are fairly, fairly uh, strong champions in the current meta right now, and. And he's going to be banned out by Sovereign. Actually, no, it's going to be Orion so <laughs> I was thinking seeing the Annie Harbor. It yes. actually surprised me for a bit. Yes, we can see the Lee Sin and the Zac, very strong junglers, have been dominant in the meta for what, quite some time. Lee Sin has a lot of playmaking potential. Zac has been very strong. It, I'm pretty sure he's going to get nerfed soon, but it's way too strong right now. So you have to ban it if you're not going to pick it. So, and New Blood don't want Sovereign to pick it first, so that's why they ban it. And now I see Orion so getting banned out by Team Sovereign because um, the mid lane of New Blood has been playing a lot of Arena so he's uh, known for his Arena so as well. So Arena so ban definitely a target ban onto the mid lane of New Blood. It is as well another jungle ban. So we're gonna see a pinch in the jungle pool right here. Uh, Kaelin, one of the strongest AD carry right now, banned out by um, New Blood. Uh, we see Syndra as well, banned out by New Blood. So very strong lane do dominant champions being banned out. So we're gonna see a lot of very niche picks coming out from these teams as well. So we see the trash right here being first pick by Sovereign. Trash support first pick here. What do you think about this pick? Alright, so trash first pick over here by Sovereign. We're gonna be seeing maybe an Ash picked up by New Blood in reply, in response to this trash. We they, they still have five seconds to change up their drafting, but it's gonna be Ash picked in uh, with the CC engaged with the Enchanted Crystal Arrow. What do you think we're gonna be seeing out of New Blood in the second pick and with the rest of the picks, starting with this Ash pick? I think here we're going to see another support pick, almost like a jungle pick because I believe New Blood does not want to uh, expose their solo laners very early into the draft phase. So yes, you see that uh, Tom Kane is being locked in by Ash. It's a safety pick to counter the trash because once the trash lands a hook, you can just eat up 
the ash and run away. So a lot of safety here for New Blood. We're gonna look at the how they're gonna draft the team comp because I believe New Blood wants to draft more of a protect the AD carry comp or maybe a catch comp because with the ash and the time can you can definitely go global with the map with the road ultimate as well. And now Talia now locked in from Team Sovereign. So Talia very strong link lane clearing a lot of roaming potential we're gonna see these two teams duke out quite often because this Talia will definitely roam out roam a lot in the game itself and Talia will be making those roams to the bottom lane and to the top lane to try to affect those lanes as we are in a very win win lane win game meta right now Ragas is going to be hover it's likely going to be picked up a flex pick for the top lane as well as the jungle uh, so he, he has risen up in popularity recently because he's just so strong in in both those roles and with the they put it to the flex pick new blood they will have to blind pick this jace uh not might go into the mid or the top lane right now so so we're going to see that while we move on into the second band phase rumble is going to be banned out or by other new blood let's see what sovereign will respond with i think sovereign should actually kind of focus on to sovereign should kind of focus on to I believe the jungle right now because the jungle has not been picked up by Team New Blood and by pinching the jungle pool even more, there's so limited champions you can play right now in the jungle. Currently, the meta is kind of very limited. We look into the Kha'Zix, you look into the Rek'Sai, you look into the Rengar, but instead, there'll be the AD carry bands coming out by New Blood as well as the Corky band out by Sovereign. So it looks like Sovereign believe that Jace is going to the top lane and not, and not the mid lane. So they're actually preparing the bands. To make sure that new blood makes the Jays go into the, the, the mid lane itself. So the AD carry pool is going to be pinched quite a bit here, and the last band is going to be nearly more of a, a very targeted band against the jungler of new blood here. So new blood pinching the AD carry pool a lot, they pick the ash, they banned both Caitlyn and Varus, so they'll be forcing uh, Maxilio to onto something that might he might not necessarily be that comfortable with. Ari is going to be the picked up for New Blood. But it's a very strong uh, mid laner. Might not as good roam pressure compared to the Talia, but it's definitely still more more lane dominant. And we'll have to see what he can do with it. We're gonna see where so we're gonna pick an AK here. I believe it will be the Jin because Jin has rise up in popularity in the meta. But instead, we're going to see the Tristana locked in by Team oh. Sovereign. We're going to see a very lane focused uh, AD carry and the Tristana because she needs time to skill. Whereas Jin has a very strong mid game spike with, with the Infinity Edge as well as the. If I'm not wrong, it was the Rapid Fire Cannon build. So instead, we're going to see the, the Tristana locked in. We need the two items to spike. S something similar to the Killing. And we'll see oh. the Nunu locked in. So Gregus is definitely going to the top lane. Nunu oh. in the jungle. Oh, the yes. Ice Destiny I special. I love this pick. I was just watching the, the, the game today morning between Team Solomon and Cloud9 over in North America where Contracts picked Nunu and just, just kind of destroyed Spencer in the jungle. I really want to see what Ice Destiny can bring with this Nunu pick. It means that whoever whatever whichever champion that no new blood picks in the jungle over here we're gonna see it's gonna be the Olaf they are going to have to play so carefully around those buffs because Nunu can just appear at those buffs at those dragons or even barons with the consume smite combo he can steal pretty much any of those buffs right so we're, I'm very interested to see how Sovereign plays around this jungle Nunu pick compared to that of and see how new blood tried counters it because if you're playing against a Nunu, you have to play around a jungle so, so differently. But look, look into New Blood's composition. They have a very strong uh, catch potential. We have the Ari, they have the Ash, they have the Olaf to run it down as well. And the Jace to actually uh, engage, to help initiate all these engage with his uh, portal. So we look New Blood whether they can actually do up the picks, move around the map, be able to get the macro objective, plus getting off the small picks they needed through the Ash ultimate as well as the Tamkench. Whereas look at Sovereign. We want to make sure that they have a very decent laning phase so that they are able to actually um, go into the mid game and actually force the fights they want with the Gregus as well and the Nunu. There's a lot of kiting potential. So Sovereign wants to play the 5v5 team fight whereas New Blood wants to go for the pick. Alright, so we're going to be seeing these, these two teams. They will be go entering game shortly in a few more minutes since we are in a external software for the drafting phase so the, we will take a bit more time to enter the game so meanwhile what if it does hmm sorry i, I can't i couldn't hear you there right there uh, 
Well, uh, I just wanted to discuss a bit about, we were mentioning about the new picks that were coming in into the current meta right now. Yes. We talked, we, before the stream, we were talking about oh, the likes of Camille, the likes of Nunu that was picked here. Very happy about that. As well as the Jin that we might be seeing more of maybe in the games later. What do you think about these picks? Okay, uh, I, be I believe that uh, picks like Camille as well as Nuno are very niche picks because they're not really very um, meta ish right now, but they are uh, counters to champions. Like, example, you pick Camille into the Javan because Camille has a very strong um, lane pressure as well as together with the Javan. So, Camille can actually match Java in terms of lane clearing as well as trading. And Nuno, as Nuno has a, a very um, supportive role as into allowing the AD carry to pop up because of his black ball as well as a lot of um, tankiness in his kit to peel for the team. So Nuno as well is more of a very niche pick. You don't see it in the meta right now but you can pick it if the scenario fits the situation such as if you are going against maybe um, a very catch comp because you have a very tank jungle as well so you can actually uh, suck a lot of the damage as well. So Nuno here is a very scenario pick and that's why it was left last for Team Sovereign. They, they, they didn't pick Nunu in the first band phase, they actually had to pick it last because it is a very situational pick as well. Alright, so I just received news that we will be going into a short break while the game is, is going to be prepped up. So, so don't go away, don't go anywhere, we'll be right back.
and we are back. We are just about almost getting into game here. Uh, let's just we're just let's just just give a rough rundown on the rosters first. On the side of Sovereign, they are, they will be starting on the blue side here. Sovereign, they that's uh, Shinsekai on the top lane. Ice Destiny, our, f every, our everyone's favorite jungler in the in the jungle. Kuso in the mid lane. Maxilio in the as uh, Eddie's carry and Mango on support. Yes, and on side of Team New Blood, we have Heavenix at the top lane, M21 in the jungle, are Ina in the mid lane, IGN Nix in the AD carry position, as well as Luxaboy in the support role as well. So we kind of run through the, the team comps just now during the champions leg. So we look at um, team, team Sovereign wanting to go and force a team fight, a 5v5 kind of team fight, whereas Team New Blood wants to be more of a pick oriented snowball early game kind of team comp, where if they can get a catch early, they will force a siege right now because their, their team comp is very towards the, the mid, early mid game because of the catch potential, whereas um, Team Sovereign. It's more towards the mid late game because they have all the peeling potential for the team. So we want to see how Sovereign actually managed to start the game to the mid lane or maybe even get a snowball ahead for the team so that they can actually just bulldoze their way through to the victory. Or will Team New Blood actually dominate the early game so that it goes to through very very quickly. The early to mid game will be ended by Team New Blood. So I want to see whether New Blood can actually surprise us and take down Team Sovereign or Team Sovereign actually play it play through the books, play it smoothly and win the game Wet to whatever means they have. And for New Blood to start that upset victory, it all starts with M21 here. He's a jungler, he has to be able to impact those lanes very early on in the game to start the snowball. Maybe going down to the bottom lane with the Ash, Ash Tom Kench lane. If you're able to win that lane, you can use the Tom Kench and, and with the Abyss of Voyage, travel across the map so quickly and so easily and just get picks off the map. But of course, this is all assuming that. They are that they are able to get that early snowball going. Anyway, we're going to be heading right here into the game. It is once again Sovereign on the blue side and New Blood on the red side. We're on to the rift. Yes, so we're now using uh, standard standard kind of um, positioning by the teams. So um, standard positioning by the teams. So. M21 most likely will be starting at the red side and Gregor starting Anuno will be most likely starting at the blue side so um, we're gonna look how Olaf will actually path his way down to the bottom side or will we see a different unique pathing where he will go to the red buff or maybe the raptors go to the blue buff and come back to the top side and move to the top side for the gang because Olaf has a lot of different pathing he can use because of his very strong clearing in the jungle whereas we look at Nunu as well I don't see how he actually path because Nunu is a pick we rarely see in competitive so I want to see how she goes and here we see a early, early, early skirmish here by Talia to the Ari. So he got, so Koso got the first damage down to you in uh, the same that he just won. Uh, <laughs> a, a lot of damage there right? So yeah, yeah again look at Koso, presenting himself so aggressive trying to get some poke before the lane starts onto the Ari because Ari has a lot, has some regen onto her kit. So, so we can see how this Talia lane works out and look look at Nunu right here starting at the jungle starting at the blue, blue side of his jungle moving down to the bottom and the red raptor of the jungle is actually warded so if Nunu actually walked by they actually have information on whether the Nunu is actually heading down to the bottom side whereas Olaf right now is moving to the red buff and as well to the golem so I expect him to maybe back off after that or maybe he will just go right rush, run down straight to the bo bottom side of his jungle and clear the camp cell before backing off yeah I'm quite surprised that the M21 decided to move over to the Krugs because Olaf, he is a very modern defender. Hang on, Nyx actually gets caught here, has to flash out of that. What a good death sentence coming up from Mango. What? Early flash blown in at 2 minutes right here. This Ash will be very vulnerable but with the Tom Kench pick. So there's a lot, there's some safety here for the Ash. Even though the Ash, even though the flash is down, but burning the flash early is very important for Team Sovereign because right now their lane is right, more considered safer now because the Ash has don't, doesn't, doesn't really has a lot of um, escape to right now. Yeah, with the flash burn on the Ash now I expect Ice Destiny to start parting towards the bottom lane to see what to see whether they can he can pull up any gangs. Uh, Tower Dive maybe not as much as there we see the power of the Tom Kench able to just devour up Nyx even though he got hit by the arrow it's okay you've got Tom Kench right next to him. Yeah, yeah definitely so this Tom Kench pick definitely worked out as what we expected it to be in uh, this game itself which is to help Ash survive the laning phase because this trash I believe his hooks will land most of the time so if the, the Tom Kench is able to ensure the safety of 
the Ash. So it makes the Ash able to scale into the mid lane game better compared to we getting caught most of the time. And you can see now both jungles are kind of spotted in the bottom side of the jungle. Oh. Ice Destiny invading. Look at Skirmish right here. Ice Destiny is invading without much vision here. Tom Kench gets hooked by the death sentence. It looks like Ice Destiny will not try to contest this blue buff and it will go 20 to M21. But Oh, it looks like Yuna had to flash out of there as well. And Ice Destiny is on to him. Ice Destiny is taking a lot of damage, however. Kuso is here to back him up. But the, almost the entire team of New Blood is there as well. Both sides back off, no kills. Yeah, I believe the Sovereign definitely get the better of that trade because I'm not sure whether New Blood were actually communicating right there because when uh, New Blood actually backed off, Ari was actually moving to the bottom uh, side of the jungle. So here we see now a trade at the mid lane here. Talia getting some cheat damage onto the Ari, but Ari is now out of mana, so it's a bit hard with the, with, with Tia right here. And that was a good side step by Ina to avoid the Sasquatch shop, otherwise that would have, I think, most likely been a kill for Koso. So good on him to be able to sidestep there. Meanwhile, Heavenix just doing Jace things, trying to bully out this lane a bit. Actually, Shinsekai is able to... Oh, he gets knocked in by the... By the seismic shot, it almost goes down, but M21 was able to be there to assist. Ice Destiny goes in, tries to get a kill, but Ina stays alive here. Ice Destiny is now in the 2v1, M21 rather is in the 1v2, and he's trying to get the kill on the Kuso, but I don't think he can get it. Kuso has to flash away, and first blood goes over to Kuso. Oh, and Ice Destiny gets this kill onto Ina as well. But Ice Destiny falls down, but all in all, it's a 2v1 for Sovereign. Sovereign get the better of that trade, but that was just greedy there by M21 to actually continue the trade because he knew he would have backed off, but here you can see the hook here by the trash, and it didn't end up to uh, any kind of kill potential. So we look back at the mid lane just now. It was a very greedy there by M21 to actually continue the fight because uh, Ice Destiny was there. He should have just backed off, even though there was a kill potential. There is a he needs to know his limit of Olaf because right there, he should have just backed off, in my opinion. Yeah, in a 1v2 situation, most of the time you do not want to be in that situation, but M21 chose to go in there, hook lands onto Nyx, will he go in, Devour comes out from Laksa once again. Nyx, I just don't think your dead sentence connecting matters anymore, to be honest, in this bottom lane. But when you look at it, Mango has been learning all of his death sentence from what we have seen here on the screen so far. So. If Mango were to actually roll around, that will create a lot of pressure on Adon as well because his death sentence seems like a 100% hit ratio. One, 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 one hook, one hit. So we're going to see whether he can actually roam around later and throughout the game and actually land those important hooks and catch the crucial members of Team New Blood to actually help Sovereign get some kills. Alright, so 6 minutes into the game, Sovereign has a minute lead, uh, not very minute, but 500 gold lead up on New Blood. Shinsekai, oh, just... This is why we were talking about Gregors being such a priority. He just does so much damage in the early game. Jace, happenings on Jace, supposed to be kind of a slight early game bully against some of the champions, but not against the Gregors. There was so much damage coming to onto happenings and happenings. Even though he's not falling behind in terms of CS, but Shinsekai has control of this lane. Yes, Shinsekai definitely putting the pressure onto Havenix, shoving him under his turret. Where usually you see the opposite of the matchup. So this he's taking the Gregors to the, to the best, whereas Jace is not, whereas Havenix is not accustomed to such aggressive plays by a Gregor. So getting pushed back to his start, even though Jace is supposed to be the one pushing the enemy, this lane is really going back. Quite not the way it's expected for the Jace. And seven minutes in, we've already we're already seeing CS leads in two of the lanes of Sovereign. Actually, all three now. Uh, ten up. Uh, more than 10 up on Kuso and oh look Ice Destiny he trying to come in he wants to get the steal on this red buff here M21 pops a Ragnarok but he just does enough Kuso comes in with the reverse wall M21 he does not get the last clone out of there and Ice Destiny gets the kill onto M21 Ina tries to go in for to clean things up but he will not be able to get anything out of it one kill cleanly goes over to Sovereign and there you see just now Mango actually missed his first hook of the screen where we saw him missed but let's get back to the uh, jungle invade there by the Nunu you see that Olaf actually popped his Ragnarok and then tried to hit the Blast clone so when you actually pop your Ragnarok and you want to hit the Blast clone the, the knockback effect isn't there because you are actually immune to crowd control so that was not the route of escape he should have chosen to he should have just run away instead so kind of unlucky right there but it's just uh, I'm lucky to actually force the engage there by, by M21 as well as not understanding that he cannot actually fly off the moment he pops his runner off. So we just saw another hook missing coming out from Mango here. What's this there? You miss the first, you hit the first six hook and then you miss everything else. That's, is this the name of the game? No, I just, whoa, that was a flash there. I'm not too sure who 
who flashed from what but flash exhausted by by mango it looks like actually so mango is now they're gonna be down that flash so thrash without flash not as uh precarious compared to what nix just now nix has his flash back up he was not able to be capitalized on by sovereign so as we see a slight skirmish in the bottom lane sovereign getting the slight worst trade out of it yeah so what what actually happened was he flashed up of the ash ultimate which nix actually fired off that's because olaf was actually collapsing onto the bomb lane so mango had to flash off of not that will be a kill onto the trash and now you see here a trade here and to the Oh no, Olaf does Ragnarok away. Yeah, Olaf with that Ragnarok, you just you so easily just get out of here. And Max still gets the hook onto Lux, the Nyx, but Lux actually is really Nyx actually gets spit out into the, the enemies here and he has to heal to get a move speed to run away here. I don't think that's where Lux wanted to spit him out at. And at, at the top lane, you see a small skirmish that happening. Uh, both ju both, both uh, seem to be going even right here. But we see Jay soon having more damage onto the Gragas. But once the Gragas get some tank item, the, the trade will go over to the Gragas as well. So now I just here invading again. And look at here, oh. Ari getting chunked out. Oh, what has just happened? Uh, you know, actually got hit up by the seismic shove and he gets taken so low here and almost gets taken up by, by Kuso. One or we one. Well, Ina is still trying to lead on the knife stage here. Maxi comes in and gets the kill onto Ina and M21 into the 1v2. He will not be able to make this outplay happen and he will most definitely go down. He almost actually goes, takes out Maxi at the same time here, but at the same time. Well, M21 goes down as well. Lux is a 3 4 0 in favor of Sovereign. And look at Shinseka, he's still in the top lane, not giving a care in the world. Yes, yeah, so that happened, that fight happened well. And look here, Shinseka Chika flying again. Move, chunking Heaven is very low, pushing him away from the um, lane because he knows that the Gregors can just flash and body slam him, and that, that's gonna be a dead end for him. And here, Nifon and gonna be picked up by um, Team Sovereign. So they're playing the early game very, very well. They're going to scale better into the late game. It looks like a very good start here for Team Sovereign. A very good start for Sovereign and even RNG decides to be in favor for them. Inferno Drake is going to be the first Drake pickup, the best Drake for snowballing. And New Blood, it just feels that they are getting pushed further and further into a corner. Yes, definitely. Look here, Shinsakai camping lane and oh, taunting Havnik somehow pressuring him. He might actually do the body stem flash, but he decided not to and actually just continue to wave clear the lane. So he's pressuring Havnik to make him stay in lane because if not, he's going to lose out a big minion wave because he is just doing so much damage onto this Jace. So Shinsakai really playing this Gregor's matchup very well. It looks like, but it looks like it's a slash damage on the top lane. Shinsekai is now in a 1v2 against, I mean M21 rather, it's in a 1v3 now against all three three members of Sovereign and he will go down to the explosive shot. Heavenix is not on the line, but he's not going to get it. Next to do, tries to jump in, gets the double kill onto the Jace and he will survive. 2-4-0. That, that was a very good room there by uh, Sovereign to actually start switching the lane so, and bring the, the AD carry and the support top lane and here see a trade into mid lane and oh what a one, missed out and chuck the one mid lane here and it's going to be Kutso who gets the outplay on to Ina Ina tries to the darndus to get the kill on the Kutso but it did not work out yes well, we, 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 we see these small skirmishes happening um, by team New Blood but they are not playing to what they want to do which is to actually utilize the Ash Ultimate as well as the Olaf presence to, before they actually do these small skirmishes so Team New Blood not really playing to what their team comp wants them to play and Sovereign just punishing um, Team New Blood with their uh, um, experience in this kind of matchups as well so Team New Blood really needs to actually get their uh, idea together because if they don't play to get their team condition right now they're just gonna fall off into the mid and late game as well and Sovereign will just take over the game it's, and it's almost a 6,000 goal lead now for Team Sovereign, only 12 and a half minutes in. This is a very, very sizable lead for them. And New Blood, they have to rely on Sovereign making mistakes now for them to even even crawl back into this game. Yes, Team Sovereign have been playing the games very very cleanly so far throughout the game. Not, not, doing, not making big errors as well, there's some as well. Whereas New Blood have been making a lot of mistakes to their team comps. And uh, now with Harold actually being picked up, um, by Team Sovereign and you can see a, a three man roam into the bomb lane this bottom tower most likely is going to go down unless the Gregor decide to save it but no I think it's most likely going to go down so this bottom lane is likely going to be going down in favor of new blood here the no minions are gone so the, the, but the turret is still will for, go down so a little bit of something finally going back to the side of new blood but it's just not enough they are so far behind now 
and look, and look at that, Tristana just gets another turret in the mid lane here, and they're onto the mid lane in a turret. And look at the mid lane, so you see the three men down there at the bomb lane, Sovereign actually rotate to the mid lane and get the tier 1 as well, as this tier 2 is going to go down, and they have not even used the rift here as well, so they might actually use it for, to actually force the inhibitor turret down, or maybe rotate to the side lane and plant the, the rift hell to actually get the tier 2 and tier 1 of the bomb turret. So of the bomb lane I mean so there's a lot of potential of using the hair as well and Team Sovereign is really playing this early game very well and Sovereign are really playing very well in the and New Blood they just don't seem to have any more answers here the lead for Sovereign is just way too large at this point so apart except for uh, hang on we're going to be seeing Laksa with that voice of voice trying to get a pick on the Maxi Leo the Enchanted Crystal Arrow will not hit as the just come in but there is no CC to stop it M31 gets swallowed by Vatapa Devour but Jace Actually goes in trying to get a kill on the Maxi, but Maxi survives. Ina is in on him, but he does not have that enough damage. And he goes down. Maxi on the rampage, but he will trade his life for it. Shutdown coming for Heaven And great to, uh great the fall from Natalia and it's a double kill coming in for Heaven X and as well as the Ice Destiny now in a 1v2 but they do not have enough damage to kill off the members of Sovereign so Ice Destiny on the rampage Kuso gets, a, gets another kill on to another member of New Blood and it's a 4 4 2 in favor of Sovereign they're gonna be pushing down this top lane yes uh, Shizakai was not in the fight so it was actually a 4v5 but Sovereign was so ahead that even the 4v5 some team Sovereign actually got the advantage of it so New Blood the, the, their early game, early to mid game team comp not actually working out. This looks like this. There's really no hope unless team uh, uh, Sovereign can make some mistakes and be punished come time and time again. But that looks very unlikely because team Sovereign has been playing the game very cleanly so far. So we saw some glimpses of hope right there for New Blood. They almost were able to get the pick onto Maxi, but Maxi was just too kind, kind of away from the Ash Arrow, kind of away from almost everything. For all that New Blood was going to throw at them, and at the end, at the end, even though it looked close, Sovereign did come out on top, and they still have not used the Rift Herald yet. And almost, and with Jace in the top lane getting the inner turret down, I, this Rift Herald might even be used on an inhibitor turret uh, soon, soon in the future. Yes, I, see, I believe that this hell will be used soon. Maybe after the dragon is being taken by Team Sovereign, or maybe they gotta force it right now. But we kind of talk about the previous fight where Tristana actually managed to survive long enough so that the other members of Team Sovereign were able to dish out more damage onto the enemy. It was initially a 3v5 at the top lane, but they managed to drag it out so long until Talia came in, and when Talia came in, uh, team, team New Blood didn't really have a chance because Talia was doing so much damage. So they're playing the team fight very well, and look here. A team Sovereign playing very aggressively as well. Oh, Laksa, he's getting caught on absolute zero. And Ice Destiny gets the kill. He is now dominating. Rift Terror bonks the turret for a lot of damage. And Nick is trying to do the damage. Ice Destiny is tanking turret. Yeah, and look, look, Shinsekai is going to flanking from the side. He's flanking uh, from the side. Shinsekai is actually stuck at the wall. Ina is actually going very, very low here. And next to is the one who gets the kill. M21 is down. The turret is down the target. But the low health bars all over Sovereign. And they're trying to get more that he gets hooked in Heavenix gets gets the seismic shot away from Sovereign so a little oopsie there coming from Kuso instead of knocking him back here but in the end one kill down for for uh, Sovereign rather and Shinsekai is still looking for the flank and Shinsekai teleport actually teleported into the ping war where he plays uh, the controller I mean he plays onto the base but you can see the ball main chart actually falling down as well so this so Sovereign is actually getting a very big lead out of this uh, skirmish at the bomb lane and now they're gonna go for the dragon as well they're just ripping objectives and objectives away from team new blood and team new blood has no response really i don't see an an opening where team new blood can come back unless team sovereign makes a very great mistake which, and getting caught count time and time again by the pick of team new blood but unless that happens new blood i i don't really see a way for them to come back anymore 17 minutes in, almost a 10,000 goal lead at this point. This is, this is just becoming a stomp. This is a stomp. Sovereign is, has just shown that individually they have been able to play better than all, all the members of New Blood. And as a team, their macro play is just so much more crisp than that of New Blood. Yes, we do see some glimpses of hope coming out from New Blood. Nyx was able to do a lot of damage in the previous fight, but he, but he is one full item behind here. And now with Baron coming up in just two minutes, that's going to be likely the next point of contention. If Sovereign's able to pick that up, I don't see they are just poised to win this game directly off of it. Yes, I believe Baron will be the final objective that will actually 
initiate the end of the game for this game but we'll see how the team new blood can actually pull off an upset because right now the lead is at least 10,000 10, 10, goal if new blood can come by this that'll be a miracle and you can see now Gregor's and Talia now moving to the enemy jungle this red buff is going to go over to team sovereign unless uh, team new blood actually spice away so and this is where Buff is trying to contest here. Ina actually gets the charm onto the Shishika. Yeah. actually gets stunned here. You might be taking down, but a good lantern from Mango gets him out. Now M21. I just see in the 1v3. Wow. Mango did the Mexico jumps in. Weaver's Wall does not really do much here. But Luxa Boy's not a target. And Mexico is doing so much damage. Plus Korn is able to get the entire team off. Blah, blah. But now Hevedex, you are alone in the back. He will not go down. But he just he teleported in way too deep and this top lane in a turret will be going down in favor of Sovereign yes look at how Sovereign has been playing the game they are forcing fights and oh. to objective and you see a catch there by uh, Shin Sekai with his ultimate what a wonderful ultimate there by Shin Sekai to catch the Ash out of position and Nyx was just way too far forward you cannot be afford you cannot afford to play so far forward as an ADK without flash at this point of the game because Shin Sekai when he has the ultimate he will just knock you back so easily and it's okay if you have a gap closer if like Caitlyn or something, but he's an edge. He has no get. He has no dashes or anything. So he will, he gets caught by. It. And now you know gets caught. He gets eaten up by Laksa. So that's still okay. But now Laksa gets caught. And <laughs> team fight here is very messy right now. Havenix flashing over and getting to the, the Tristana, but getting. And Havenix, he 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 just he just saw the Tristana. He was like, I have to kill this Tristana. That's my only job here. And even though he's able to get it, he just gives up his life for it. And this is. And this is likely to be an inhibitor that's going down. Actually, no, Sovereign looks like they're going to be backing up. Baron has spawned, and they look like they're going to be resetting right now and moving towards that to try to get down some vision. Yeah, so they're playing, playing it right safe and not forcing the inhibitor down because Tristana is dead for the moment. So they're backing off, get back the items, and then maybe go for another push. Or they might force the Baron, they might force the Baron because Team Nuba is way too far behind to actually do anything right now. Because if they were to get caught one more time, Team Nuba. Team Sovereign will just rush the Baron and that's it, over. But now, let's look into the game itself because right now we see who's the most impactful player right now we have seen so far. It is definitely the Ice Destiny Nunu coming out. The Nunu pick right here has proven a lot. You can see his kill participation around 80% of the team who has been everywhere around the map, putting so much pressure in the jungle, in the lanes as well, just by invading the enemy, drawing pressure from the lanes as well. So Ice Destiny really has been playing this Nunu amazingly. Yes, and 9, 1 and 5, I think the score really speaks for itself, does it? Highest number of kills on his team, highest, I think he has the highest KDA as well. So I said he's really putting on so much work on this Nunu here. Uh, maybe a slight, uh, some slight, a little, little bit of, maybe I maybe should go went, went for the Warmox instead because I feel that Warmox on Nunu just does so much, you, you can get chunked out to maybe low health. And then you fake in after, and you're full health again after like 15 seconds. Ma so ma maybe ma that's just something that he could look on doing. But right now he has almost played an almost immaculate game right, so far. Maybe true, but now when you look at the itemization of Ice Destiny, he's actually going for the support role. You see the Night Vow, you see the Locket as well. It's really just to protect the team, not for himself. So you see Ice Destiny really playing a very supportive jungler, but actually getting most of the kills. So this jungle is deadly, I tell you, deadly. And now you look at the bottom side, Shin Sekai actually pressuring the bottom lane, knowing his teleport is up and having his teleport is down. So they're gonna just get away slowly until Gregor's actually reach the bottom and hit the third before they actually can force the barrier because and now look here. Kuso might be getting on Ash and actually go on the land and Kuso will be taken down by Heavening's uh, oopsie coming in from him. And and now and uh, we're gonna be having a pause here. Uh, we're gonna be seeing what's the issue shortly. But Kuso looked like he was really out of position there, gets charmed up, gets stunned up and gets taken down. Yes, he was actually kind of standing still for I think a, a few five to six seconds. That's why um team New Black actually engaged on them. But Let's talk about what happened throughout the game. We've seen Ice Destiny playing this Nunu very well, roaming around the map, making sure that every lane has pressure onto the enemy turret, pushed in. Whereas you see um, M21 forcing engages, but his skirmishes at the time, the point of time, were not correct. He was unaware wherever the enemy jungle is, no information, forcing fights, getting caught out by um, Ice Destiny's gang as well. So M21 not playing not expecting the information he has playing very aggressively when he is not supposed to whereas Sovereign playing by the book know where the enemy is gang the lane repeat put pressure onto the jungle drop pressure out of every lane all the lanes are lo were losing when Ice Death just keeps invading and invading and need pressure from the other lanes to help out the M21 
And now at this juncture of the game here, the Baron Duns will, will definitely be starting up pretty soon here. With but Huso, even though he he just got taken down, it looks like uh, they're going to be restarting his computer or his client because he just left the game. Uh, but as I was saying, the Baron will be such a huge point of contention here if you Blood is able to get another pick. Even this pick, Kuso, because of this pick, I don't think Sovereign can do the Baron anymore until Kuso comes back up. But if you able to get another one of these picks again uh, later on in the game, they can potentially be the ones to force the Baron and force a 4v5 fight in within a Baron pit. Even though, yes, uh, Sovereign has the better team fight team, we might be able to see New Blood come out on top if it's a 5v4 situation without the mid lane. But you're looking at a scenario where in the 5v4 situation as well, uh, Maxi Lu gets caught because when you look at the goalie right now, you see 42.8 thousand compared to 31.2k. Most of the goalies, most of the goalie is onto the Tristana as well as the Nunu. So if the Tristana is left alone in the 4v5, being peeled by his teammates, the Gregors and the Nunu, there's no chance for the 4v5 to go towards Team New Blood because Tristana will just deal out so much damage that even New Blood's 5v4 is not enough to take her down. So unless Tristana gets caught by maybe a uh, Ash Otter or Ari Cham, even a 4v5 is not an ideal scenario for New Blood because they are just so far behind. And just now, I just realized that, that for on the side of New Blood, they don't even have a true front line. Even though, yes, they have the Olaf and the Tom Kench. Olaf, he's only one item and he only has the Cinder Hulk. And that's, that, that's just not enough tankiness. He's 0 and 6. He does not have any really real armor items to counteract. Uh, uh, hold on, the, 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 play will be, the game will be starting soon. So now, you see, uh, most likely, I believe that was a mouse issue here by Team Sovereign on Kusuo. So he'll be coming back with the mouse. His mouse that has been fixed and will be coming back shortly. 28 seconds on, 28 seconds on the death timer. This mid lane tier 1 is falling down. Well played here by New Blood. So New Blood finally able to get something back. But what? Or, or the, what but what's the cost of it? Shinsekai gets that bottom lane inhibitor turret so low already. If they prep for a push in the bottom lane, that inhibitor turret is will just, will be just gone. So right now, so Kusuo will be back up in 5 seconds. Teleport is up on both top laners, so if we do see a fight, I I expect there to be some serious flank actions going on with the teleports. But right now it looks like Sovereign will be trying to set up some vision around Baron. Try to try to try to be able to get it without much contest from from uh, New Blood. But even if New Blood tries to contest, I think at this point in the game it is so hard for them to even any in do get it. I feel that they are so far behind that it really doesn't matter anymore. Re remember that Olaf doesn't have flash, so if they want to contest the Baron, Olaf must run it down into the Baron pit. And before he can even run down, maybe even Team Sovereign will just kill him before he even reach the Baron. So the, the, the chance of the Baron still right here for Team um, Sovereign, Team New Blood, I mean, is very low. So New Blood must not allow Team Sovereign to start the Baron unless they are sure that Olaf can actually run it, run all the way in and s maybe get a steal out of it. But look at Olaf item, he is so paper. He doesn't even finish a single item except for the except for the uh, t uh, tank item of the jungle item. So let's just look at Nunu. Nunu has completed two full items and maybe finishing his third, no, fourth jungle item. So look, Nunu is just way, way ahead of Olaf. Olaf is just too paper. He'll get shred by the Tristana. And I'm kind of confused as to why M21 decided to build a Spectra Skull instead of any armor item because it is because as you mentioned Maxi is the one that's really doing so much damage to all the members of New Blood. So pick up the Spectra Skull won't really help out with that. Meanwhile, Heavenix is just taking so much punishment on Shinsekai. The, the, the Alpine will be blowing him backwards and Shinsekai gets a solo kill onto Heavenix. You look at Heavenix item, he built a dust build of Drafta and a Yomu Ghost Blade. He didn't build a uh, Mar Morintus, he doesn't go for Black Cleaver. There's no survive there's no extra survivability kill onto his items. And Gregor's just building pure oh. armor and the kill are getting chipped out. This Baron is just gonna go over to Team Sovereign. Yes, alright, then Baron will be likely secured by Team Sovereign. There it is, and Nyx in a 1v1 with Shinsekai with the Baron up minions. I do not think you can win this, my friend, even though it's an ADK. Oh, style points for Shinsekai with the body stem flash there. That was, that was, I don't think that was necessary, but that looked really cool. Uh, I definitely think the flash was very unnecessary, but he just want to style onto the Ash. Flash, body slam on the other direction, and just popping on onto him. Uh, so cute onto the Ash. He's just so killed two people in one minute. 
So inhibitors I will be going down almost at the same time here. Top lane, it will be going down relatively soon. Explosive cast will not push anyone back here. Shinseka is trying to do Oh, Mango on the side is trying to look for the hooks. Inhibitor is still relatively healthy actually. While Mestil they're onto the Nexus Terrace. They want to end the game right now. Mestil is so incredibly low. But he gets the kill onto Jace. And now this is all over for New Blood. As Sovereign, they're onto the second Nexus Terrace. While Shinseka is just destroying the back line here. Sovereign, they're onto the Nexus. And this is going to be a 25 minute victory for Sovereign as they take down the Nexus slowly but surely they're trying to pack the KDAs a little bit uh. they're, they're just getting all the kills right here they're not they're, they're, they're just get, they just kill off the Ola before ending the game 23 to 5 a stunning setting here before the game ends Sovereign really just dominated from the start to finish well drafted team comp well drafted uh well played team style, team fight style, but they didn't even force a team fight. So actually, a team sovereign actually punishes the mistake of New Blood more than actually playing to the team comp because team uh, team New Blood actually are playing way out of line because they actually are forcing unnecessary uh, unnecessary fights, unnecessary um uh getting caught out unnecessarily. I mean, sorry. So team New Blood here has played badly, but. We've seen Sovereign, we haven't really seen full, Sovereign's full potential yet because they didn't manage to use, we didn't manage to see their 5v5 team fights which were part of the team comp but they were able to show us how dominating they are in punishing mistakes by Team New Blood. So Team Sovereign definitely the favourites we're looking at here right now for this matchup. We'll, we'll see whether they can actually win the tournament because I believe they are one of the fav favourites among the uh, teams here to actually win the tournament itself. So Sovereign now will be make, advancing into the semi-finals. New Blood villain effort from them but they were just unable to overcome the powerhouse that is sovereign here we will be going into a short break soon and we'll be coming back with the next quarterfinals matchup uh, relatively soon so stay tuned don't close that browser we'll be right back yes stay tuned